So I started in college as an astrophysics major. Astrophysics is very interesting, um, but I think you know I took some computer science classes and I found that I really liked the problem solving part of computer science. The kind of specialty within computer science that I work on is uh, machine vision and machine learning. A lot of the techniques that you use in computer science can be applied to lots and lots of problems in the world. I got interested in kind of the biology application. Um, I saw that there were a lot of different problems in biology that, that machine vision and machine learning could be used for, and not that many people working on it. A lot of people's research involves collecting large image data sets. If you want to be able to make any sense of that, there's a lot of data mining and machine learning that needs to be done. My lab applies machine vision and machine learning tools to analyze animal behavior, to answer questions in neuroscience. We have been focusing on how do you track animals from video, how do you uh, quantify their behaviors. The goal with machine learning is to be very adaptable to a, to a new system. The way that that system works is you give it training data where you say, this is what I want the computer to do. So I want the computer to say that the fly is chasing now and that the fly is um, grooming now. And then you learn a function, you learn kind of a program that can take the video frame as input or information from the video frame as input and automatically produce that classification. We collect a lot of our own fly data. Being able to kind of do the um, data collection ourselves helps us kind of develop kind of end-to-end -end systems. We're still working on the backlight, so the backlight uh, IR power drops a little bit when the red light comes on. Oh, okay. The one that we've been focusing on at Genilia for the past couple of years are neural activation screens, neural inactivation screens. So you activate or inactivate a neuron and you see exactly what behavior this causes. We screened 2,000 different uh, lines of flies and we recorded their locomotion and social behaviors. We collected about 20,000 videos, um, each 15 minutes long, and then we automatically tracked the position of every animal in every frame of every video, and we classified the behavior of each frame in, in each animal. We can take an image of the fly's brain to figure out which neurons were activating, um, and then we can also measure the behavioral effects of activating these neurons. These images are 3D images with 30 million pixels in each of them, and so that gives us ideas of which neurons are involved in each behavior. The tracking systems we've developed, the um, behavior classification systems we've developed have all been used by other labs at Genilia for very different problems. We develop them for flies, but they work on larvae, they work on mice, um, they work across a, a wide variety of animals. We collaborate with a lot of different labs and we try to find kind of the common problems within all of their data. We really want to see what is the series of behaviors, the sequence of behaviors that leads to successful courtship. With Royan, what we've been collaborating on is, you know, kind of trying to develop a new system beyond the systems we've been we've used before. They're taking video of the of the mice at the same time as audio recordings of the mice. And so we were very interested in this data because you have these two different views of behavior. You have the video and you have the audio. And so we're trying to come up with a system that allows us to use one view to inform the other view. Finding correlations between the video and the audio is more astounding. So we're developing new machine learning methods for this, using audio to inform our clustering algorithm, our, our, our machine learning algorithm, what was relevant behaviors, what behaviors should be similar to each other. A lot of the other problems that we're working on, there's a right answer and we know when we've gotten to the right answer. Here, we can come up with an answer and then we don't know whether it's good enough or not. That's maybe the hardest uh, problem that we're working on, um, trying to discover behaviors. Does she go up to him, or are they kind of already together? She's sort of rejecting him in the sort of standard rejection way first. And so we try a lot of visualization techniques to allow the biologist to see what the machine learning has done. The same behavior should have the same shape in the embedding. You know, because I've seen you looking for that when you're looking at these maps, yeah. when you plot things like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, so you're, you're sort of thinking about like a kind of a mid-level descriptive language for behavior. Yeah. You know, we don't know what the, you know, the final solution should look like, and we don't know how to get to that solution even if we knew what it was. So it's the same thing, but now I'm coloring by speed. We started working with Adam to kind of develop behavior classification systems. He collects a large, large amount of data. He had video where it looked like it would be pretty hard to track the animal. For his video, it's a mouse and it's uh, reaching for a food pellet. And so we would have needed to track at least 
the paw and possibly the, the digits on the paw. So we used a kind of new technique that's using kind of uh, the flow in the, in the image. So you can kind of estimate how each pixel in the image is moving at every time point. And we use that as the input to our machine learning system. And then, you know, we started trying to do the actual science with this data. So we had two different conditions that he was looking at, one without a manipulation, one with a manipulation. And we were, you know, looking at the data, trying to figure out what was different between the two different conditions about the behavior of the animal. So this is just the, from the first lift to 100 frames after that. I didn't stop at oh, any I particular see. point. We wanted to be able to look at kind of the motion of the, of the paw. Is it moving kind of in a circuitous route to get to its destination sometimes, or is it, you know, just moving slower or faster? Because we saw this difference in kind of the timing of various behaviors. The animal for some reason, it's taking longer to plan his action and to actually execute the action. Mm -hmm. And that's represented by this increase in the number of frames that it takes each one of these steps, mm -hmm. which just pulls out of this data set. When we looked at the trajectories today, they looked pretty identical. And so we need to kind of work on different ways of, of measuring statistics, different ways of visualizing the data to, to figure out what's actually different in that data. Actually, this coincided with another project that we were working on to track the muscles of larvae. Um, and actually, we're using almost exactly the same algorithm for both of those very different seeming problems. Which expression in here is interesting? So the one we were using were those diagonal muscles. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we wanted to do was get a much finer readout of behavior. And actually, the muscles are kind of the finest level of readout of behavior that you can get. Um, so if we knew which muscles the larva was, tr was contracting at every time point, we would know exactly what the larva is doing. We have all of the data for analyzing its behavior. And so this is a very rich description of the behavior of the animal. The larva are mostly transparent, so if you express uh, GFP in the muscles, you can see them under a microscope. Um, so what we were doing in, in, um, in that project is taking video of the animals while they crawl and trying to track the muscles as they're moving. You also see um, when a muscle is contracted, you'll see it become brighter when, it, when it's contracted. So you get a good readout of the muscle contractions. I don't have a good sense of how much resolution the tracking algorithm needs. Mm -hmm. It's a brand new project, you know, we're trying to, we're starting by just trying to develop the tracking algorithm itself. We're doing a very primitive setup right now, we basically have a microscope that we're borrowing and we are putting a petri dish under that microscope. Someday when we, you know, know what we're doing, we're going to actually collaborate with a couple other labs at Genilia that have been developing um, high resolution cameras that can uh, follow the larva as it crawls. One thing that, that, that I've kind of learned from, you know, being more embedded in a biology environment than kind of straight in a computer science environment is that it's, it's important to think about all of the aspects of the problem at the same time. So you want to think about, you know, the experimental setup, the data capture, as well as how you're going to analyze it at the same time because it makes the problem a lot easier to solve. Neuroscience is a field where I think we're going to make a lot of progress very soon. You're collecting so much data, so I felt like it was somewhere where there was a big need for the type of tool we were developing in a place where we could make a big impact.